So I've got here two examples of two polyatomic compounds. And what we're trying to do is to name it. So this kind of goes, this kind of like some of the tips when it comes to trying to name um, polyatomic compounds. So the first tip that I said, how do I know that it's polyatomic? Count capital letters or uppercase letters. So if I've got three uppercase letters, I know I've got a polyatomic compound. Right? So that's what we have with both of these examples. Now, what is the polyatomic in both of these examples? What is the polyatomic? Oh, sulfate. So we know that sulfate right, is pretty much the name of each one. Right? So it's something sulfate. Right? So we've got something sulfate. Now, what is the name of the first one? So we want to always identify metal, non-metal, and we have a metal here. What is that metal? Calcium. Now look at the charge on your periodic table for calcium. What is the charge? It's a plus two. Is there any other charge associated with calcium? No. no. So because there is no other charge associated with calcium, can I just name it? Yes. yes. So what's the name? Very good. So calcium sulfate. Now, with the second example here, right? what is the metal in question? Copper. It's copper. So we know it's copper. Now, the problem with this is we need to figure out, so we know it's copper, but the only problem is if I name this copper sulfate, it's incorrect. Because when I look at copper... Right, so if I look at copper in the periodic table, what are the charges associated with copper? A two and one. So it's either a plus one or a plus two. So it's not going to be just copper sulfate. It's either going to be copper one in Roman numerals or copper two, bless you, in Roman numerals. So it'd be either copper one sulfate, copper two sulfate. That's the question that you have to ask yourself, one or, the, one or the other. But now, if we're looking at it in terms of the classic system that I've mentioned, right? That's the Latin name. So if we're using the plus one, what's it called? Cuprus. Cuprus, right? So it'd be cuprus. And if we're using the plus two, cupric, right? Cupric. So it's one or the other. I mentioned one way to do this is to do the reverse crossover. Right? But what we're going to do is, instead of doing the reverse crossover, I showed you guys the, five -step cross, the typical five-step crossover rule for, for putting together all ionic compounds in, in the previous lesson. So what we're going to do is we're going to guess one of these charges. We're going to take a, we're going we're gonna to sample one of these. So I'm going to just erase this right, so we can kind of figure out and, and use the space here. So which copper am I going to use? I'm going to select it. I'm not going to let you select it. So the copper I'm going to use is, I'm going to use copper one. Okay, I'm going to use the copper one, which means the charge, if I'm using copper one, the charge for copper is plus one. What's the charge for sulfate? SO4, negative two, negative two. So if I cross over, Right, cross this over, right, remove the charge, right, so I remove the charge, so I've got Cu2, brackets SO4, and a 1. Because I have a 1 out here, do I need these brackets? No. So I'm going to remove the brackets. Now, the thing is, doing all this is, is pointless. Why? Is this, oops, is this here, the formula of our given no. no so right away I should know what is the name of this copper copper two. copper two so I know that this example here is really copper two sulfate and if I don't use copper two I can use cupric Sulfate. So are we clear with uh, with that? 
So in this example here, I've got magnesium, hydrogen, phosphate. So do I have a metal, non-metal? Yes. yes. So we know I have that. So I can proceed with the five-step crossover rule. The hint with this hydrogen is this. Well, well let's get to it first. What's magnesium? Mg. So we're going to put in Mg. Now we're not going to we're going to ignore the hydrogen part for a set for a second. What's car what's phosphate? Because remember we're basing it all from the whole Nick the Camel to help us remember. We don't want to memorize hydrogen phosphate. We want to know how to get to hydrogen phosphate if we memorize the Nick the Camel line. So what is phosphate? PO4. PO4. Negative three. However, however, by putting in a hydrogen, by putting in a hydrogen, so if I remove this part of the bracket here and I add in a hydrogen, how does this formula change? It becomes, yeah, so the minute I add a, a, an H, I take away one of these charges. So this charge no longer becomes minus three. This charge now becomes negative two. What's the charge for magnesium? A plus two, right? So now what we're going to do, we're going to cross over from top to bottom, right? And we get Mg. I'm going to get rid of the charge as I'm crossing over. HPO4, two. Two to two becomes? One to one. What do I do after I, I've got ones? I remove the ones. So I'm going to remove my ones. And because I had a one outside the bracket, I can remove the brackets. So all of a sudden now my formula is MGHPO4. Okay? Now, here is one of the... Um, the hydrogen polyatomics. Now, we want to look at it this way. What's this polyatomic here, the CO3? That's carbonate. So we know we've got carbonate. But what is, with the H, we call it hydrogen carbonate. What's the metal? Can I just name it? Why? Yeah, there's no additional charge. Lithium is only whatever the charge is, that one, which, is, which happens to be a plus one. So when naming this, this would be lithium hydrogen carbonate. Okay.